Dear Tammy, I know you're busy focusing on acing that test or winning that next track medal, but I want you to take a step back. You'll achieve more than you ever imagined and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. But it won't be because you were smarter, stronger, or faster than anyone else. No matter how hard you try, and you will tear yourself up inside trying, you will never achieve that 4.0 GPA, and you'll never be that high school track star that you and your parents wanted you to be. But you'll learn that perfection isn't what matters. It's how you respond to hardship and failure that defines you. You'll see it in your daddy's eyes when his failure to prepare, make tough decisions, or set his ego aside leads to years of struggle for your family. You'll be hungry, relying on food stamps to feed yourselves. You'll be nearly homeless, having lost almost everything that's important to you. But you'll see how your family works to recover. Your family will work harder than you've ever had to before and harder than you will ever have to again. You'll come out tougher, but also more humble. You'll learn that gratitude is essential and you'll learn how to survive a tough time, which is good because you're gonna need that skill again. You will join the army and you will have two very different lives. Your first will be on a path towards a happy life and happy family with achievements in the military and a chance to travel and see the world. But that wonderful life will end so abruptly, it will feel like a death. And it will put the rest of your plans for your family, for your career on life support. The helicopter pilot lost both legs when her National Guard unit was shot down over Baghdad. You will almost die, but you'll make it, just barely. Your survival won't have anything to do with your own abilities. You'll make it out alive completely because of the grit, sacrifice, and outright heroism of others. You haven't done anything to be worthy of their sacrifices. But these heroes will give you a second chance at life anyway. Your second life begins when you wake up a few days later in agony non-stop, unrelenting, seemingly endless agony. The pain is all-consuming that you'll even tell the love of your life that you're gonna shut down and be gone for a while to, quote, circle the wagons. He'll be terrified because he thinks you're saying goodbye forever, but you'll reemerge. Sure, you'll be angry, vengeful, and scared, but most of all, you will dig into the deepest part of yourself and find a way to survive it. You'll realize how much you owe those around you and come out determined to never let them down and to live every day to repay them. You'll be so grateful and proud, not just of your husband who becomes your champion, but all those who sacrifice to keep you alive. You'll have to learn to walk, eat, bathe, and do everything again by falling, crawling, pulling yourself back up. You'll remember that you're a soldier and you will never give up and you will never abandon the mission. And as an officer, it is your responsibility to take care of your troops. Because of that mission, you'll meet a powerful man, Senator Dick Durbin, who instead of seeing someone pitiful and broken in a wheelchair, sees you as someone who can help make your nation better. He'll challenge you to once again serve your nation, but this time by running for Congress. You will be apprehensive, but you'll say yes and work as hard as you can to succeed. And you will fail. But this time, instead of just a personal failure, like a bad grade or a swing and a strike, the world will know that you'd failed, that somehow it won't be as devastating as it would have been in your first life. You'll pick yourself up again because anything else would be to betray those who sacrificed to save you in that dusty field in Iraq. You'll reach once again into that well of gratitude to find a new way forward as an advocate for your fellow veterans. And just a few years later, you'll find yourself in the best position you've ever been in 
to repay those who sacrificed to save you. Tonight, we sent a message that a positive campaign that is focused on solutions for working families and the challenges they face can still be successful. You'll be a United States Senator. Do you solemnly swear? People will start recognizing you. Strangers will stop you to say hello and thank you for your work. You'll see the difference that you can make in people's lives. Your achievements now can actually make your nation a more perfect union. Service members get taken advantage of all the time. And you'll be proud of it all. But as happy as you are to be able to help people, the best part of your second life will be you finally getting to have the family you've always wanted. Senator Tammy Duckworth. Oh my gosh, we should point out that last picture we just saw is big sister Abigail there with mom and dad and we wanna wish them all the very best this morning as her family has expanded. What amazing news and talk about a second chance at life, mm -hmm. right? And that never give up, I'm yeah. constantly never giving up. And now I love that idea of being able to repay those who sacrificed and saved her when she w went down in that chopper. That what a mentor sense. Dick Durbin was too. And true. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to read many letters we've featured in our Note to Self series in our first book. Note to Self, Inspiring Words from Inspiring People will be available in May. It will be published by Simon & Schuster, which is a division of CBS.